Greetings everyone, this is Stirring It Up with Chef D Live. I'm here at E.B. Fresh and I am here with Mr. Anderson. <laughs> we are talking today about Mr. Anderson and all of the amazing things that he is doing in the community. And we're also going to talk about the meet out. This particular show is sponsored by Black Vegetarian Society of Georgia. The meet out will be taking place October 19th, which is Saturday. And both Mr. Anderson and I uh -oh. will be there again <laughs> All right. doing our thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, without further ado, Mr. Anderson, let's Great. talk a little bit about what we are making today. Okay, okay. So, first, thank you so much for having me on your platform. Of course, of course. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor. No problem. You, know, you put thank in you. a lot of work. Yes. It's not easy to do, <laughs> although you make it look easy. Right. Um, so, Today, uh, we're going to be doing some Baba Ganoush. Ooh. I just like the way that sounds. I love the way that sounds, Baba too. Baba Ganoush. I can say it all the time, right? Baba Ganoush. Yeah, so um, I had some beautiful uh, Japanese eggplants out of my uh, yes. garden in my backyard. Yes, yes, and yes. Are they pretty, guys? Yes. Look at that. And, you know, for those of you who are from another country, they don't call it eggplant. Abuji. 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 In Ghana, when we were in Ghana, we <laughs> saw these. Uh, they were called aboji. Abuji. Okay, okay, there you go, okay. so everybody can see it. Yeah. And so, um, baba ganoush is very much a Middle Eastern style dish. If you're familiar with hummus, mm -hmm. right? It's made with some of some similar ingredients as hummus, yeah. but you know, you know, hummus is usually made with chickpeas. Baba ganoush is made with roasted. <laughs> right, and it kind of breaks up the monotony because you're getting your falafel is chickpeas, <laughs> then you put the hummus on it. That's chickpeas. So you want to do something. Little, you want to do you something know, different. Yeah, 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 and put you some vegetables in there. Exactly, kind of exactly. So this is beautiful. I um have to admit, this was probably the, the best way that I've had eggplant besides, you know, the traditional yeah. parmesan. Mm -hmm. Eggplant parmesan, yeah, that's, that's right. And this and that. So that's good too. Get away from the fried. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is a good way. So yes. I'm excited. I uh, pre-grilled. <laughs> I pre-grilled this. It looks interesting. Look at this, y'all. When you roast this off in the oven, it has a lot of water, believe it or not, right? And when you roast it, what you're doing is you're pulling out of you're pulling all of the moisture out. And it actually um, caramelizes and it has natural sugars wow. in the eggplant. And so it has a sweetness and um, you see a lot of the seeds and it has like a creaminess wow. as well. Yeah, and it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, it's absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's off the grill. So, oh, so you did this on the grill. You did, did, yeah, that, that's Ooh. charcoal fire, fire lick. So that's a different yeah. approach. Because so usually, smoky, smoky. yeah, people put the uh, the aboji oh, yeah. or the eggplant in the oven mm -hmm. and roast them in the oven with garlic and all that. So I do smell that little that yeah. that fire grill, yeah, that, yeah. that char yeah. grill. Yeah. So this is gonna be this is gonna be kind of nice how we do it. And then a few pieces of the skin getting yeah. stuck in there. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. That's, that's and so also in addition to the uh ganoush, what I'm gonna offer is just a simple way that you guys can make like a toasted bread um, to go with. I actually was at the farmer's market, I was telling Mr. Anderson, I was at the farmer's market today and getting, um, you know, meals for clients, getting food ready to prep for clients. And I left the market and forgot the pita. So I said, man, I wasn't trying to go all the way back over there. So we have another natural food market closer to the city. And so I went in there and I'm like, okay, what do they have? What do they have? And so we have some shabatsa that we can show you how to play with. Yes. All right, so let's do it. So right. what is the first step for making so, this baba so, this so, over here? So really, uh, the first step is to get you some good eggplants. You can have a bigger one, however you like. Yeah. I prefer the Japanese longer one instead yeah. of the fat one. You want to roast that down or you want to grill it down, uh, put it in the oven, and several different options. And then after that, your next step is you want to core it out okay. and get the meat in there. Right. And then once you Good. pour it out, the ingredients, the basic ingredients is uh, tahini. Yep, we got that. Lemon juice. We got that. Garlic. 
got that. Some pink Himalayan sea salt. We got that. And you're introducing this. I'm going to put you on to two things. Okay, Sumac, there you go. Uh -huh. Sumac uh -huh. and the other thing is the smoked paprika. So this is wonderful because you smoked it. You kind of right. grilled it. Mm -hmm. So the smoked paprika is going to give it this like just next level flavor, right? right? That smokiness is just going to come through and through. Yep. And then sumac, when I go to any kind of sort of Muslim uh, place uh, or, you know, Middle Eastern place that serves hummus, they serve baba ganoush, I always ask, because this tastes real different. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do y'all do? And they're like, man, we use that, that sumac. And so it's just a spice that is um, what is used in places like the Middle East. So let me tell you, let me tell you my first experience with it. How I learned about it. Okay. Uh, I was in Michigan at right. Lebanese mm -hmm. okay, a Lebanese restaurant, yeah. and um, they serve their bread with a seasoning, this. with a seasoning called zaata. Ooh. And um, in zaata is where I first figured out that they had the sumac in that, and. Um, yeah, it, it definitely like a, a, a tangy type of... Yeah. yeah it, it's a beautiful... It's a beautiful yeah, it's a season. nice season. Yeah. And you know, I always tell people, particularly like here in Atlanta, when you go to the DeKalb Farmer's Market, that's our big, one of our big farmer's markets, there are so many spices that we're not familiar with um, that are used on, you know, different parts of the world. And you want to just try stuff out, you know, you want to try something new. And I mean, I would never have known about Sumac until I asked, you know, I asked people when I shop or I ask people when I eat somewhere that's a little different, if there's like, you know, how do you make this? I always say, if it's catching my attention, how do you make this? Right. And then they'll tell me how it's made and that's usually how I find out about something a little different. So. There is a place right in the city, close to one of the colleges that we have here, and they have the best baba ganoush. And I've really been trying to match their baba ganoush with what I do. Oh, yeah. And and sumac is one of the ingredients inside. So you can see how, how easy this is going. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really need a knife. Sometimes it'll just the skin will pop open for you. And uh, a lot of times when people roast it, they say poke holes in it because. Uh, <laughs> It'll, it'll bust on the grill. Mm -hmm. That never happened to me until today. I had one bust on me, but I did like 10 of them. Oh, and okay. I had only one bust, so I don't really like to, I like it to, you know. <laughs> and I actually like, honestly, y'all, I like skin yeah. in my eggplant. Cause you know, there's a lot of nutrients in the skin and I know that we want a certain texture, but like you can do some, you can wrap Definitely. You can do yeah, something really exciting nice with this. Like you can get some wild rice, some yeah, mushrooms. Definitely. And then you can just do a nice little um, a wrap with that wild rice and then you can serve yeah, it. That would yeah, be that would be so and, good. And also, that's why I prefer the Japanese or Hitchman. Yeah. Because the skin is much more heavy mm -hmm. versus the uh, you know Black Beauty or the one that yeah. they tend to call the American style uh, egg. That's an um, Italian eggplant. Yeah. With Black Beauty. Yeah, and they, the, the skin is uh, not too. It's, it's kind of tough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's this tough. this skin is very it's very very nice yeah. and soft. Yeah, that's why I prefer this one over the other one because I do like to get a few bits of skin in there with mine as well. So y'all, Mr. Anderson, you know, he and I are having a conversation. He is a chef, but he doesn't like to use that language. <laughs> you know, he he doesn't like to be uh, labeled. And I respect that because chefs, you know, you know, do a lot. Right, right, right. And um, there is, a, you know, some people believe, you know, hey, they went through a specific training to be chefs. Well, I asked the chef, can I use the word chef? And they said, girl, you know the same thing. Exactly. So exactly. I'm like, I, if they say I could be a chef B, then I could be a chef B. You know? Okay, so so <laughs> I was thinking about that too. We had the conversation, mm -hmm. and um, she said, you know, let's, let's talk about it. So it's not necessarily the label. It's just like my mother went to the schools yeah. and um, man, we catching buses, we doing all this different kind of stuff to go through this and I'm like, mom, oh, that's a lot of work. You know, she's know. like, boy, that's what you gotta do, da, 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 da. So, you know, I just uh, kind of get apprehensive by taking that title because it's like, I didn't really put in that kind of work. But I, what, I, what I did think about today when we talked was like, maybe I'm the people's chef. Yeah. Like the people's chef, you know, like, 
See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam! Like the people's champ. See, the people's champ. That's right, like the people's champ. You know what I'm saying? So, if the people say he's champ, then I. Man, you know, exactly. I mean, when I serve my food, I'm conscious about how I play it. Exactly. And eat with your eyes. Yes, and it is. then people who taste it, they be like, mmm. You a chef? No, right. Like, no, and they be like, you a chef? No, you, you know the people saying? chef. Yeah, exactly. You, you so, call yourself the people chef. chef. So I, guess I love I'm that. The people chef. He's yeah, the people we'll chef. So Mr. We'll Anderson, the, the people, people chef. chef. Look at that. <laughs> Something was born right here. That's right. I stirred it up with Chef B. We so stirred it up. And I'm like, man, Mr. Anderson, yeah. you remember when you came up with that? Yeah. 2019. Yeah. We September 29th. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah. So this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one. We need some folks to help us eat this, though. This going to be quite Okay, that's okay. They come. Quite a bit, right okay. here. People right. always take some. Oh yeah, definitely. And that's one thing about this. It travels. It travels very well. you can always take this, package it up, put it inside of a nice beer type cold, container. It don't have to be hot. It's your bread. Mm-hmm. You can actually put this on a burger. Yep. Um, a mushroom burger or a veggie burger, right? So you can have it as a spread. Some people like, you know, veganes and some of these other things on their burger. You don't need to do that here. You can actually add this to that really nice kale flavor. with it. <laughs> Very nice. Nice kale mm-hmm. salad and go on top of, you know, that just so that as a sauce. So, so now that we have that, yep. that's like the base. That's the base. Oh, we we probably didn't mention um, parsley. parsley. Can I put this in here? Yeah, flat leaf parsley is a good uh, situation to have too. And some people wait to the end to put it in. I like to put a little bit in the food process okay. to give it some color. Wow, and then I'm going to also add in a little bit of garlic. Okay. All right. I'm going to probably do like two big cloves. These, this is organic garlic that I get from the market. And I find that the organic garlic has a, a better flavor. Um, it's more pungent, it's spicier than if you got, you know, garlic that was not organic. So have you experimented with the, uh, the different types of garlic, black garlic and all that? Well, I haven't done the black garlic yet, but I do like garlic from the from the farm, mm-hmm. and that garlic is very very garlic scapes are beautiful. Um, these this garlic and then the ones that are grown from the farm, those are really really nice. So one that I uh, experiment like? with, and it's not actually garlic; it's in the leek family, but they call it elephant garlic. I've heard of that. That one is beautiful. is it really it, good? It grows well in your garden. All right. Well, in your garden, rinse this off. It's All called right. an elephant garden. And mm. um, is it big? Why is yeah, it called it, elephant? Because it's, it's, it's much bigger than the regular garlic, exactly. But like I said, it's actually in the leaf family, mm. so you get a little onion and garlic taste. Yeah. And one. Yeah, that's it, dope. It is. It's that's nice. dope. It's nice. All right. So we have the eggplant in here. We have garlic in here. We have parsley. How many spoons of the tahini sauce? I like quite a bit of it, so okay, I'm gonna um, pour. Yeah, I, I, pour? I would say if we had to give them a, a measurement, I would say start out with maybe a quarter cup to every four eggplants. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. something like that. But um, definitely, one thing that I learned about if you do fancy yourself as a chef mm-hmm. or culinary expression. Don't get stuck into these measurements. Taste Man, your food. Taste you. your food. So put what you, you feel in there, and then right. we'll put your heart in there. We we'll taste it, and if we want some more, yeah, we, we want, want some more. That's right. Yeah. So um, you know, you can get the. I, you know, some people gotta have it. two ounces of this, and the, I know better than that. And you know, I mean, I. I well, you know that. what? I would say that's a good start. You yeah. know, because there's some people who are not able to, you know, really prepare food the way they might want to, where they can be more flexible. Right, right, right. And so they need a start, they need a base. Mm-hmm. And so I think measurements are important. I right. learned that, because I'm like, man, you don't you do like And that. then, especially if it's a traditional yeah. dish, where certain and stuff yeah. has to be there. Yes. And they, a lot of their ingredients yes. are very overpowering. Yes. So you just so gotta- you do be, have to- Yeah, you gotta, right. you gotta be mindful, but you yeah. gotta also, like you said, Heart, feel it. Heart, feel it. So uh, you you added a little something special with uh-huh. a little sumac. Yeah, we're going to do that. Right? Yeah. Yep. So what I want to do is add my little specialness to it. I take some uh, boiled black eyed peas mm. and add a couple spoonfuls of that because Baba Kanoosh can get runny. Yeah. Like you said, with yeah. the liquor, it can get runny. So this is, this is like my thickening agent. Nice. It's just some boiled black eyed peas with salt and pepper. 
And that's it, like maybe two tablespoons. Yeah, just enough to about two kind of thinking it up. Just to think it up. You and don't want the black eyed pea to stand out. You just kind of want to give it some right. thickness. Um, this is the, the sumac. It looks very much like um, the paprika, like a very dark paprika. Got a dosy look too. Yeah, it smells. It has like a um, kind of like a soury, spicy flavor. Mm -hmm. And yep. then, so we do one uh, tablespoon of that. Okay. Then we also add in, this is my Smoke pepper. Yeah, I, 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 if I don't care about something having a red color to it, I put a lot of that in there most Man, of the time. Man, I love this. Yeah, in my kale salad. Oh, what? Exactly. This yeah, is it. Give it that. Oh, cumin. Definitely got to have some cumin. Some cumin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to add the cumin in here. Let's put this in. And so while I'm adding these last few ingredients, so we're going to also add lemon. You know, Mr. Anderson is a, a very dedicated uh, grower. Right? Yeah, yeah. And he, he loves to plant food and share his food. So talk, talk a little bit more about the love that you have. Okay, so I, that. I uh I know it's a this Atlanta is very extraordinary because we got a lot of people that, you know, grow food or part of farming, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we got the special pops uh, right? and uh, truly living well and the and all city these, farms. Yeah, all of these places, uh Gilliams and all of these places and I Love them all, support them all. Um, but my niche is more of kitchen gardening. Mm. When I say kitchen garden, I mean like actually growing a garden right behind my kitchen. Mm. Wherever your kitchen is, you need to have some food growing around it. So mm -hmm. you can go out there. Like I go out and grab my celery. I go mm. out and grab my kid. I go out and do, you know, I'm taking my stuff right from the garden to the kitchen. So I kind of mm -hmm. consider myself a kitchen gardener and a uh, more in a suburban, urban setting, you know, mm -hmm. like at your home. I understand these community gardens and this sprawling, uh, you know, farm type situation, mm -hmm. but I uh, I like to have it like right where you are. Mm -hmm. So I call it, uh, I grow, you grow. I grow, you grow. What? So if I can grow it, you can grow it. Cause mm -hmm. people are like, oh, da, 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 da. So, you know, I do stuff where I um, show people how to make garden boxes that mm -hmm. fit their, backyard or where they at and this and that um so uh been doing that for quite a while just like to empower people to eat what they grow because it's nothing like eating the stuff that you grow man you know? so um that is dope yeah 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 so i've been doing that for quite a while um i love that and it, i, I call it you bro yeah this this microwave <laughs> generates so that's one whole lemon I, mm -hmm. I think we might need one and a half okay and i'm just trying to get all the juice out of this mm -hmm. one and um, so uh, the microwave generation. Yeah, they kind of you know not as patient as you need to be to grow your own food, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, it's a service that you know you definitely have to invest in it. In it. And so time. You, the yeah, time. time and you know resources. So it you know it might take you three months to get a, a good batch of tomatoes, oh, but once you get once it going, you, get it. you always have something that you can mm. eat that you grew. So um, it's definitely like a culture thing that you got to get involved with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so tell me some of the things that you feel are staples in a kitchen garden. Okay. Like, so what kinds of things absolutely you always have to have? We're so beneficial and lucky to be in the South yeah. because of the weather. Now with all of the change in the climate, like it's, su it's September and mm -hmm. it feels like it's summer. Yes. Right? It's like the second it's, spring. It's Crazy. So I love Georgia for that. It's like you get all four seasons mm -hmm. and you get a true autumn, a mm -hmm. true winter, a mm -hmm. true summer, a true fall. So um, I would say because of that, you can grow collard greens and kale yeah. all year oh, round yeah, here. Sure. Um, now, if you do have hot spots in your garden, you got to be mindful of that. Like the sun comes up in the east, you want your kale to be kind of not so in the direction because it is a cool weather festival. It doesn't like it super hot, but it can stand some heat. So kale and collard greens always. Mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime here, okra does very well. Oh yeah, and okra is a, is a plant that's hard, you know, hard for other animals to eat it up and different things like that. So because of all the little spikes on it. Yeah, there. and then it's just it's from Africa. Yeah, you know it's African. It's African. <laughs> it's African. You know, it's hard. It's yeah, hard. Yeah, it's hard. And once it starts growing, you gotta pick it like every three. Yeah, every, every because day, you don't want to get it hard. Because if it gets too long, it becomes woody or yeah. whatever. So it's a high yield. 
you can mm. always have some okra going. Yeah. Um, mm. So okra, kale, kale, collard greens always going. Nice. Um, those spring onions. Oh man, keep them going all the time. Um, definitely your sages and your mm. thyme, and then it's a uh, it's a plant called lovage. Mm. Tell me about lovage. that. Lovage is like a it's in the herbal meal. The uh, seasoning that they sell. Yes. Love is in there, but love is kind of like a celery. Mm. You got a celery, celery. celery clovey, sweet yeah. taste to it, but you can use it as celery. And the reason why I, I say love is because it's uh, perennial, meaning it comes back every year mm -hmm. by itself. So growing traditional celery is a little difficult. It's more challenging. Yeah, right? but the love is, if you get a good love plant going, had this celery type of taste. And so we're not talking about the stalks, you're talking about the actual leaves. The leafy gotcha. stem more, mm -hmm. not like with the traditional big lettuce thing that we yeah, use. Right, 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 right. I mean, I think that's more of a traditional thing. Yeah. But um, And that's actually interesting, like in Guyana, where I'm from, when you go to the market, you know, when my sister came up here to visit, Big ups to my sister, by the way, Catherine, yeah. Catherine Kennedy in Georgetown, Guyana. Right. Right. When she came to visit, she um, never saw the stalk celery. So it's probably lovage. Mm -hmm. she said? She's like, I don't know about this celery. It's all they have is like the the leaves. Leaf yeah. She has a lot. And it be look. It looked flavor. like this. It was just like this, and it got so mm -hmm. much flavor. Right. Amazing. You only need a handful of. You know what I mean. And then it's another celery called Tango. Mm. That's another one. It's almost like a Chinese type of celery. Okay. But the celeries, the spring onions, your kale, you always need that. And then, you know, tomatoes. Like, I got tomatoes I'm taking off the vine right now. Still, Why you ain't bringing up for me? What's and I had some good ones. Okay. I, Why are you talking about I, it? Because, <laughs> you know, we got about four of them. So I got to keep them for my private stock. But okay. um, one thing about tomatoes, they are kind of hard to deal with as far as, like, Pest and different yeah, things like they that. They like them. Do your right? research on your tomatoes. They like them. But I'll tell you one trick to keep the birds off of them. Um, once they start growing, they nice and green, and then they'll get it like a little blush color before they oh, turn man. red. Take that, yeah, and put that in the window. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as they get red, them birds are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they'll literally take yeah. a bite, yep. and then yep. they gone. Yep. They move they, on to the next yeah, thing. And it ruins your tomato. So man. don't be scared to pick it when it's a little blushy. You know, when it shows signs of turning red, take it off. But leave some stem or some vine on there okay. so that it can still suck some nutrition yeah, from the yeah, vine yeah. while it ripens. That's one um, That's a little trick. trick. That's a little hack, as yeah, they say. Because um, if you're growing them tomatoes and you're putting all that work in and you're getting all these mm -hmm. bugs off of them, and then the hornworm, you got to watch for that. And I say just look at your plant mm -hmm. and hand pick it because a lot of these sprays and different yeah. things. You know, I make I make some of my own spray, but it's still it's still, it's still it's hit and miss. They'll they'll get what you plant. You know, like neem oil, a little dish soap mm -hmm. and water in a spray bottle. That's a good um, antifungal, anti all kind of stuff for yeah. your plant. Um, peppermint oil, dandelions, yeah, uh, little dish soap, yeah. hot peppers, garlic, yeah. all of that stuff yeah. will work to yeah. spray your plant down. And if you do spray your plant down, you spray it down in the evening time. So that when the sun comes up, it'll already be acclimated. Because if the hot sun hit that spray, it'll burn that plant yeah. up. So um, wow. yeah, I do that. I just, you know, tips and tricks like that. Walk through my garden, that yeah, kind of stuff. So hell, you know, keep your stuff so that you can actually eat it out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, greens. What I've been all these eggplants. These I've got a lot of them. Man, I've been eating off of these for at least three months. And what? it's only been it's only been um. I only had like three plants, but they just, they coming good, they coming good. I, and you I, probably have some really good soil, so yeah, you keep them in that soil. I do, a, I go up to the, uh, off of 675 um, King's Ranch and get the horse, uh, horse manure, compost the horse manure, and they have chickens running around in there, so I'm sure it's a mix of chicken and horse, put that in there, and then sometimes I get the black cow from the store mm -hmm. and just have that kind of as the mix. Oh man, and I got my own that thing is compost. probably just like, yeah. what? So, you know, and then you just got to know your, your garden. Some yeah. spots grow better than yeah, other spots. That's right. Um, any kind of zucchini you can get going. Zucchini is a high yield. Yeah, last year we did zucchini and we got the squash. Right. 
Beatles. Always do that. Oh, the Beatles ate you up? The squash Beatles oh, told them yeah, 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 yeah. Or that little vine board that'll get down in there. Man, yeah, they, they, they kind of fussy. Devour. So yes. you, you got to keep them squash kind of moist and you got to check the underside of the leaves. Because yeah. what happens is they be these right. little yellow things and that's mm -hmm. the eggs. And once they hatch, they be 30 of them at one time. Yeah. So you got to kind of brush that off at and that's why I say it's an investment. Yeah, you gotta food. really, it, you gotta it's love. Out. I mean, I know when I'm able to, life is busy right now, mm -hmm. but when I am growing my did own we get food, this in there? we did. We're okay. gonna probably have to check okay. and see, okay. taste. But when I'm growing my own food, I feel so good and accomplished. You do, you do. Um, you know, and you're right. It's just now is really the time to start getting your soil ready, you know, you're getting into the fall months. Mm -hmm getting the kale, getting the collards into the ground because it loves the cold right. and it takes off. It just kind of, everything's dormant, and chilling. Asian cabbages do well and right now. Yes, a lot of, lot just of good stuff. This second season. Ooh, ooh, I'm so excited. Yes, this looks so good. Yeah. Man, I, I want to bring you over to the house to help me get some stuff. Oh yeah, thank you. All right. Looks good. Look at that. All right, so we're gonna taste. You got it. It looks beautiful. Mm. It needs a little bit I, more. I would take a little bit of more mm -hmm. salt, and I could, I could even stand a little bit more. A little cumin, and another thing is garlic. Mm hmm. I the see. garlic is strong, but I, you know, I want it to be a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe we bit got more. one more lemon. I find that you put a lot of lemon in these dishes, yeah. which is fine because they, they're like Oh, natural. you said you was going to add some. Man, guess what? Very essential. I wanted to have my essential. Oh. I can't find it. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's that somewhere been around been here. Extra lemon that would have been, been the extra so little lemon that we need. This one. Yes. Or maybe if you got a zest. No. Okay, you know what we could do? Let's see, let's do this. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I, I couldn't zest. find my lemon essential oil. Oh, I had it last night at the sweat. Oh, the sweat love. Yeah. Oh, let me, I'm the apprentice to Good. Baba Robert. Man, look. Yeah, so I do the sweat lodges yeah, too. Yeah, we do them, oh. we do them, um, me and Farmer Jay, we do them maybe six times a year. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, we had a beautiful fall equinox sweat oh, last night. Nice. Nice. It was off the chair. Yeah, I think that, that might do That's it. That's going to do it. And then you said a little bit more cumin. Yep. And then one of these. Yep, I put one in. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, you good. Got to put a little bit more salt okay. in. Okay. Right. Oh, do we, uh... Oh, a little bit of oil. You really you don't need to. You don't. It's you don't have the smoothiness. Yes. Yeah, so you can add that in. Just, yeah. you, you can go for it. You can buy it. You can do it. So tell me... I know you're the oil, so tell me about the oil situation. All right, okay, so okay, we have essential oil. So this is not an essential oil. This is a pressed oil. Hey, how you doing? Greetings. This is just like, let's say you have grape, grape seeds and you literally crush the grape seeds and then you get the oil out, right? So when you're getting an essential oil, the essential oil is steam distilled or it's cold pressed from like the, the rind. So like a lot of the citrus oils, like let's say this is our rind for this particular lemon, you can cold press the oil out of there, right? But with like, let's say the bark or the leaf or the stem or another part of the plant, you're using a process called steam distillation to separate the liquid or the, the water from the oil that's inside of the plant. And then that's your essential oil. Right? And what we find is that the essential oil, the chemical constituents or chemical compounds in the essential oil is just so powerful. And you know, all the things that it does for the plant, it basically does for you. So it protects you from different things. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really nice. So like this now, I've really been telling people to try to minimize how much oil oil they use in their food when they're cooking. Because it's been a training, right? When we grow up and we're preparing food, you might start a dish, you know, you turn on the, the skillet, you saute, saute you run down, oil. You run down. I mean, and like a lot of oil. So I'm not saying don't use oil, because we're going to use oil in this next part of this dish. But I want you to be mindful about the amount that you use. Because and it compounds. It compounds. Okay, and, you know, that's saturated fat, and that's just extra oil in the body that you don't really need. 
And so, like, something like hummus or Bhagavad Gita, you really don't need more. Right, right. You know, it already has beautiful flavors from the spices and the herbs that you put in here. Look at this. Mm -hmm. You really don't need oil, but it's just sort of that, that, that yeah, mentality. You gotta have, you gotta have some oil. Put some oil put but some you, oil. you really don't need to okay, do yeah. that. So we're gonna just hold off on using this. We're gonna use it in the skillet. So I'm gonna actually start working my skillet. I'm gonna warm it up because we do have a little bit of water in there and we want it to evaporate. All right, so let's see if this helps. The little condition of this. And this is the exciting part about cooking, right? It's the, the science of it, it's the alchemy of it. It's trying to figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't work. Ooh, the brightness. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the eggplant is still holding up. Mm, that's good. Like a, it's wow. It smells like I was grilling it. That is so good. And I got a piece of skin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like that. All right, so what yeah. we're gonna do here I'm gonna rinse this out and we're gonna actually put the baba ganoush, some of it, inside of the bowl. While we're doing that, let me yeah, talk to you about that. Oh, you take care of that, perfect. While we're doing that, while we're kind of rinsing off some things, we're gonna talk about this ciabatta. Oh, this ciabatta is nice and soft. And usually when you get ciabatta, it's made with wheat flour and it has more of a, it's, it's a bite, but it's a little bit firmer than this. I mm -hmm. want you to feel this. Yeah. It's, it's like spongy. Right. Wow. Right. <laughs> gluten free. It's gluten free. So this yes. is a gluten free. It's a corn flour based bread, and so there's no wheat. There's no dairy. It's non GMO, preservative free. Definitely. And I really wanted to fresh, try this. It's got a fresh feel to it. it yes. Like it's coming out of a package. Exactly. Like this was something that someone just picked up from the bakery, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to toast these off and these are going to be what we use for our baba ganoush. All right, so I'm turning up my, my little skillet here and we're gonna, now we're gonna add a little bit of uh, oil. All right, and so once again, we're adding oil where we need to add oil, okay? And we're gonna let that get a little, a little hot. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move some of this aside. I'm going to actually take some garlic, because we're making like a garlic bread, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is, you know, cut this up and toast it a little bit in the garlic, in the oil. Mm -hmm. So we're going to toast the garlic in the oil, right? And just chop this up a little bit. You like garlic bread? I do. When I, you know, like say, what I don't like is like when I have to eat spaghetti and garlic bread. Mm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it seems too much. But oh, because of the flour. Yeah, yeah. Got it. But um, I like to have it like with salad or something more than I do with uh, like spaghetti the traditional. Mm -hmm. Am I doing that right? Yeah, yeah. no, you didn't do it right. That's okay though. There we go. And now this thing isn't all the way down. So we may have a problem. Let's see if it works. Ah, it works. Yay! All right. So we got this all cut up. This is our garlic. Ah. <laughs> Green. Okay. All right. And then we're going to add the garlic. We're going to add the garlic to the skillet. Add the garlic to the skillet. And then I also want to add a little bit of, of the parsley. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. It's going good. It like it's going to add a little bit more of this. Just a little bit more. Right. And what I've learned also is to not use the, the salt. We're not going to use the salt now. We're going to use the salt at the very end. Right. So then what we want to do here is... We want to just take them face down. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And that garlic is going. Mm -hmm. Now, now, 
regardless of the situation, when you do it like that, that skillet, mm -hmm. how you keep it from getting brown so bad? Like too brown? Now it's okay because remember the, the bread is already cooked, so we just want to get that, that crust mm -hmm. on the edges. Because that's what I find when I always end up scorching my garden. Yeah. You just gotta wait to yeah. put it in or be quick. If you you gotta be quick. Okay. And, and really what's happening here is we're gonna flip these in a moment. We're gonna flip them. And when we flip them, you know, it's just basically gonna, you're gonna see the little scorched sides. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Doesn't that look good? Yeah, that do look mm -hmm. good. On this right here? Ah! <laughs> That's Fabulous. Yeah, so we, again, simple. So we use some grapeseed oil, we use some parsley, we use a little bit of garlic, and then that was pretty much it. Okay? <coughs> and then what we're going to do now is just <coughs> put this off to the side. So, whew. Right. And then you hit it with the salt. That's a box of uh, garden box plants. Where, yeah, the seasonal plants. Like say right now it's fall. Okay. So in the fall it will be plants available. It would be like the kales and the Asian cabbages and stuff. You wouldn't get tomatoes and peppers and things of that nature at this time of year. But if you did it in the spring, you would have more options as far as tomatoes and them type of things. So um, you can get in touch with me through my Instagram, and my Instagram is. Everything Mr. Anderson. Everything Mr. Anderson. So it's at everything Mr. Anderson. It's and we'll drop it in the comments. It's everything on that page. So don't go there just thinking you're gonna see gardening. You're gonna see copper weather on there. You're gonna see you know me uh, promoting, helping my fellow friends in the community. All these different types of things. But um, definitely we can help you uh, eat what you grow because that's my mission is for every kitchen to have a garden. Yeah. It's like every kitchen has a barbecue grill or something. You should have, you know, and then don't limit yourself in an apartment. Use the apartments have a patio. And we can make little boxes, pot gardens, all kinds of different options for um, eating what you grow. You know, and it's not like you're going to be able to just not go to the farmer's market or nothing like that. You have to supplement it and then it'll grow and you get in tune with the community gardens and you have gardens yeah. all over the place right. to where you can eat. But I did one year do a, a 40 day eat with you grow. Ooh. And I ended up eating like okra and eggplants almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> but I did 
did it, you know, you did it. out of my own garden. I love so it. it's so possible. It's meaning but, that you never spent money. Meaning the only thing I ate was, was uh, I had uh, eat, only out of my garden saved nuts and grain so I could make some rice. I could do like nut milk and different things like that. But everything else I had to come out of my garden. I love and that. I that for me. Um, but I started it in June and it ended in like August, so it was the peak of the growing season. Yeah. And I was smart enough. Yes. Yes. So you had I, some options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had, you know, tomatoes and I had some salads and I had it. But the main producer, like I said, that okra had something for me every day. You know, the main plants wouldn't quit. Um, something like that, if you, if you did it like at least twice a year, so you can prepare people before the season and yeah, say, okay, exactly. between this date and this date, next year we're going to do it. So yeah. get ready. Yeah. And then you'll be busy, at least with people in town, you'll be busy with people yeah. planting to prepare. We want to work with you on that. that. And that's what happens is if you know that you're depending on eating it, you'll get up and get out there. Yeah. You'll check them leaves. Mm -hmm. You'll water that thing. But when you get hectic in life, yeah. you know you just stop at the and but you know that's not an option. Yeah. You like I'm committed to this as the food source. Mm -hmm. you go wow. out there and pick that. So that. look on the air, we doing a collabo okay. on this. We okay. doing that. In 2020. I bet you got a nice backyard too. We got a nice backyard. Okay. No, we talking about Beyond. city, okay. not just okay. us. We talking about yeah. everybody. So like, yeah. Bam. Yeah, we, yeah. we talking that. about we love that. <clears throat> everywhere. Because we believe in that too. I mean, like with essential meals to go. With, with know, eating plant-based and it's getting back to healthy meals mm -hmm. and simple meals and a lot of the foods that I prepare for my, my clients are coming from the farmer's market when I can't source it right. from, let's say, Patchwork City Farms mm -hmm. or some of the other local growers. But I do remember last year when I was able to grow my food and I know I need to get back to that space. Oh my gosh, what a great feeling to tell my clients the collard greens, the kale, yeah. I do that for you. You eat what I do. Yeah, the yeah. spring onions you had, I made that. And I even, that even when you supplement your meal with stuff that you've grown, Man. it takes it to another level. Yes. If it's just your baby, yes. if it's just your time, yes. or whatever, you can like, there's something going on yeah. there. And that's the beauty of it. So it's more of an empowerment thing. And, it is. And, and you don't always win with the elements. Like, it was a rabbit. <laughs> One of them was laying, was hanging down, and I, it was taking big chunks out of it. But he only got to that one, so I was like, oh, man, I'm glad to eat these up. But he got to eat, too, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what the old fella told me. Yeah, he got to eat, I too. Told him, he said, when you're growing food, you got to plant enough for them to eat, too. They've been here before you. So I don't, like, try to kill them or yeah. try to do all of that. That's what people try to do. Yeah, if they get to it, I mean, hey, that's part of it, you yeah. know. But grow what you can. Yeah, you know, I, get I grow, you grow. Please, please. So, I'm sorry. Somebody was asking about sumac. You mentioned sumac. Yeah, uh, so the sumac is um, a Middle Eastern spice that's used for Baba Ganoush, Bahamas, for um, dishes in that sort of genre. Falafel. Take it, take it. How you yes. spell it? Sumac. Um, actually, let's show the folks on the air what it looks like. It's spelled S U M A C. I got this from the DeKalb Farmers Market. I tell you, okay. it's the bomb, and then this is what it looks like. It almost looks like a um, darkened uh, paprika. Mm -hmm. So oh, really, really nice. And it has, um, it, it has like a sorrow, kind of sorrowly, kind of mm -hmm. tangy, tangy mm -hmm. smell to it, y'all. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's just a nice it's compliment. Oh. So good. I so snuck some more tahini in. I saw you. Okay, okay. I saw okay. you sneaking. And I think that I think that put us in the. And wait, it right. just went like. But I'll put us in the atmosphere. Okay, so. We're on the mountain. Right, but, but now we up in the atmosphere. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna get mine in a minute. Okay. I'm gonna get mine in a minute. Yeah, so yes, talk, the sumac, the sumac. So, Miss Everything, Mr. Anderson on Instagram. Mm -hmm. He's gonna also be at. Meet out on October 19th. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna be uh, doing a demo of uh, gonna make some carrot tuna. All right, wonderful. So I'm gonna show how to make the carrot this tuna. This is his favorite thing. Yeah, make a carrot tuna. <laughs> and a uh, special shout out to Tracy. Yes, Tracy the Thomas. Of, um, yes. Of the Black Vegetarian Society. Because she actually made this connection. Yes, and, um, yes. She saw me at Moving Art in Atlanta. Um, my brother do the yoga. Thing, moving on experience 
Alan Rome. He's beautiful. He has a great thing that he does every year where he gets yogis together and artists and they paint they paint the yogi and then the yogi is performing with the paint. Ooh, I love that. And he had me do uh, a food demo at his thing and Tracy wow. saw me there. And then she turned aside or whatever, but same thing there. It's like you a chef, you know what I So he the people uh, chef, y'all. That's the new that's T yeah. yeah. M trademark, yeah. right? The people yeah. chef. The that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so, oh, yeah. <laughs> the truth. The truth. And then I'll also be at uh, Meet Out on October 19th. Y'all, I'm going to be doing a demo. I'm going to be doing my world famous butternut squash latte. <laughs> oh, butternut squash latte. It's called the Shazam with essential oils. All right, y'all. So you're going to stay tuned for that. As always, if you are interested in taking back your health, taking back how you prepare your meals, taking back just keeping it real simple in the kitchen, taking back eating plant-based, then come to me, essentially Chef B. We do essential meals to go. We do three day, four day, five day, seven day plans. And you can actually check all of that out on Chef B.com. Oh, yeah. The three weeks, Chef B. Three we also have a cookbook, like Planet Spirit yeah. 36 simple recipes to do with essential oils. So it's a plant-based cookbook. But then we also show you how to use the essential oils in the food. Uh, I get an international vibe from you, too. <laughs> and then you can start like, showing more of the international. Man, I do. Okay, I'm okay. doing the bylines. Yeah, you told me. Doing, I was like, you do everything. He's like, yeah, I make this. I make this. I make that. I was like, wow. Yeah. I make this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You probably can cook this. Like I do that so many different ways. See, that's what I yeah, need. I need to know that. Yeah, Because like that, I only. I did some curry not too long ago. That was my first time. Got a curry this year. Curry. Yes. And then I do the babka noodles. Yes. So. I need a few more. That's something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, we have all sorts of amazing things going on all the time. If you follow us on YouTube, you get to see these cooking shows and see other things that we're doing. Yes. Is it Jocelyn Stute Morris says hello. Hey, how you doing, Jocelyn? She said two, oh, of, yeah, two yeah. of our favorite chefs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right next to you at the uh, Jocelyn. 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 That's, that's right, Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Yes, yes, yes. Big up to you, big up to you. Yes. 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 So, man, we got so much stuff popping up all the time. I'm always having events. Like we said, we got the meet out. The next person that's going to be on the show, our next show, October 13th, getting ready for the meet out. Okay. Okay. It's Stephanie Sunshine. Oh, yeah, I know that sister yeah, too. Yeah, so he's going to be at the meet out. Yeah, yeah, man. So, you know, stay connected to us. Stay connected to this movement. It's all about taking back your health, taking back eating these plants, taking back just nourishing your body from the inside out, and the body, mind, and the spirit. You know, for real, for real. And have some fun with it. And some very fun. fun with it, right? Very fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. So, y'all, we about to eat. <laughs> That's what we like to do after the show. We like to eat. Alright, so thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. If you're in Atlanta, check out Atlanta Streets Alive. That's going on today and also in the West End area, 640 West, which is in collaboration with the Seasoned Bar Reality. It just opened up a breakfast cafe. Yes. Yeah, so food truck park. And the food truck park, ATL Food Truck Park is on October 5th, man. We got so much stuff popping. The food truck park is on October 5th. The launch uh, for the breakfast cafe, the vegan breakfast cafe, is tomorrow. From 6 to 11.30. So, man, we got so much happening. We're going to drop all the way in the comments. Just so that you should put stay connected. And don't forget, follow me on IG, Facebook, YouTube, all the platforms. All the platforms. All right, y'all. Enjoy your Sunday. Peace. Let's go eat. All right. <laughs>